guys I have browned all of my oxtails and they are in this big pot now I am deglazing my pan I have my onion and my bell pepper in the bottom of my pan and this is how I deglaze you see all the little look like it's burned on at the bottom that's all the good stuff that's all the season and the flavor that you want to be in your food so what I'm doing is I'm browning or just sauteing my onion and my bell pepper until they are soft okay you see they picking up all that goodness off the bottom of the pan okay now to get all of that that won't come off to deglaze your pan now you don't have to do this with the onion and the bell pepper in but I do it so that I can get all my flavor you can um, do your onion and your bell pepper first take them out then you can deglaze your pan for those of you that don't know how to do it um, now here we go I have some water and I'm just gonna pour the water in and it don't take much you see when it's doing that it's heating up the pan and it's loosening up all that stuff that's stuck on the bottom and you just work it with your if you have a non-stick skillet you want to use something that's not going to scratch the bottom you just work it to loosen it all up okay i have had this this pan set for about eight years and i i got it from jc pennies and i have never used um like a wood spatula I've always used whatever I have in my kitchen and you see it has held up I paid $179 for this pot set and it is the 1810 stainless steel bottom the bottom um, is really really thick and that's what you want because it regulates your heat and everything so you see that it looks like it's making a little gravy at the bottom because it's deglazing all of that good stuff off the bottom of your pan. Now you might need a little extra water, like I do. Okay, I'm gonna turn my heat up a little bit because the water has lowered my temperature. And once it starts to boil, um, you will see the difference. So I keep moving it around, making sure that it's not sticking. Because you don't want it to get burnt on. You see, my bell peppers are getting nice and soft. But they don't have to be mushy. I want all of those flavors to come together. The bell pepper. Oh, I love bell peppers in my food, y'all. In certain things, you know. You see it's starting to boil. Let that do it for about another five minutes. Ten minutes top. Depends on what size pan you have. And what you're going to do after that, you're going to pour all of this into this pot on top of here. So here we go. Now you see, there's not much left on the bottom. Okay, let me move this over here to the sink. Run me some water in that. Let that be soaking. And go ahead and dip. This is what I have. Now, ooh, that looks so good. Ooh, I can't wait to eat. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to move this pot to this eye and I'm gonna feel it I'm not gonna cover it but feel it like right here with water okay because you don't want to put too much water in your pot boil over so like right here or halfway full is where I fill it with water and I have in my big mixer bowl some water already
you see it was just enough and this is a three quart bowl I got from Walmart and they come in handy because you can mix your pancakes and all kind of stuff in that bowl in that one bowl I like dump bowls you know where you just throw everything in there and it's got a little handle and a little spout and we're good to go so here we go guys this is not my finished look, but this gives you a general idea of what it's look like, what it's gonna look like. Now I'm gonna add, I'm gonna stir this all together. Okay. Get all my onion and bell pepper down in there. Okay. Now I'm gonna add just a little bit of salt because anytime you add more water to something you add the need to add a little extra salt push them down in there okay now later on well let me go ahead and do it now I'm gonna show y'all what I'm doing y'all see my little kids they done lined up all my pots and y'all can see my pots have been well used. They usually have the little stuff that you can clean this off with at Home Depot, but they haven't had it. And Walmart don't sell it. And I didn't find it in Lowe's. So I'm going to try again today. I got to take my light bulbs back. But it's some stuff that you could put on here to clean that, that off. But this is what I mean. You see how thick from here to there? That's the 1810 stainless steel bottom. Okay, yeah, it's well used. These bad boys are almost 10 years old. And this is a one of the pots that's a part of, a part of the pot set that I have. So, let me show y'all what I'm getting ready to do while I'm on camera right quick. I got my little measuring cup. Okay. Let me find the flour. This is how I make my thickening for any of my stews or if I'm if I want gravy added to my pot roast or or anything like that. I got some water that I pour in there. Okay. Now Oh, I picked up a fork. Isn't that awesome? Pay attention, girl. Okay, now, all of your seasonings that you put in your on your meat is what you're going to put in your thickening. I have some water, and I'm going to put a few tablespoons of flour. That's one. That's two, okay? And stir that all together. This is going to be my thickening. This is what's going to give it that thick gravy. Because I like my juice to stick to my rice and my meat. Y'all, mm, that's why my behind can't lose no weight. But that's all right, too. Okay. Got my rag to clean up my mess. Got dog, that pot is hot. So that's my thickening, y'all see. And you can keep stirring it to get some of the lumps out, but eventually they will cook out if they're not too big. So I take it and I like to push it up against the side of the cup like that. You see the mash out the um the lumps. Let me see if I can get in the light. 